see. Don't say that on the air. <laughs> hey, edit it <laughs> out. Edit it out. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to alienate the only person that's listening to this. <laughs> this is the cold open right now. <laughs> <laughs> Our cold open is just us insulting the people that we know listen to it. <laughs> Did you hear about that? Yeah. Um, Did let's you just see keep that bunion? Coming. No. Oh, freaking Steve Martin in his. Oh, he gets on my nerves so much. Are you because trying he's... to insult people that may, that you want to watch us? <laughs> he, he, he probably Wait, is. Like. Welcome to Three Guys, Three Questions, where three guys test the limits of propriety through the questions we ask. Today is September 20th, 2014. This is episode four of season two, and I'm Aaron L.M. Goodwin. I'm um, joined, as always, by Andrew Savage. Say hello, Andrew. Uh, hello, Andrew. And as well, I'm joined by Adam, no stranger to love, Anderson. <laughs> He knows the rules. So do I. This week we're sponsored by uh, Fear of Commitment, Jingling Change, um, Boats Against the Current, and uh, Being Born Back Ceaselessly into the Past. So. Okay. Yep. It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty intense. <laughs> next week it's got to be like puppies or something. Wanted, we got to get some more like next abstract week. sponsors. So I got us some, okay? I was I was I was being facetious. <laughs> oh. Apparently that didn't translate. No, it did not. Via Google Hangout. Um <laughs> follow back and update or follow back and feedback and updates and all that kind of stuff. Um the first thing I want to talk about is Immediately after we recorded last week, I I thought I'm gonna Google search for Great Gatsby party ideas. We talked about we talked about how people throw Great Gatsby parties, and I found a Pinterest search <laughs> or a board or something with Great Gatsby party ideas, and it is full to the brim with that. I feel I feel like maybe. Maybe it wasn't so much Googling on your part, and it was just like you were already following that Pinterest board. Mm. My secret's out now. Um, <laughs> two secrets. Now people know I have a Pinterest. That's what I was about to say. I'm like, I don't have a Pinterest. Is that a thing I should have? I don't, I don't see any need. I... Should, we, should we put the podcast on Pinterest? But, like, give it a nice doily? <laughs> A doily? I have an Etsy account for it. <laughs> <laughs> you can have. We could sell. We could sell signed stills from the video feed. Our, our, <laughs> artisanal podcast stills. <laughs> yep. Um, we could scrapbook them and everything. Draw, Put them on cardstock. Draw little birds on them. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine there'd be lots of stamps involved as well. Oh. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> no, I do have a Pinterest because I had a website that I found out that this blog I had been writing years ago that I haven't updated in forever was like wildly popular on Pinterest. So I was just joking about you having a Pinterest? That was <laughs> I have a Pinterest account because I had to sign up for one because tons and tons of people were sharing this this these articles from my website and I wanted to be able to like kind of track and organize <laughs> it because it was getting crazy. I, I, I just looked at my re my referral links and my um, analytics on this website that I hadn't updated in like a year and just, you know, I was going through things and cleaning things up and I was like, what the crap? This thing is getting like all kinds of traffic from Pinterest. <laughs> and in order to see that on the Pinterest and I had to create an account and stuff like that. So I do have a Pinterest account. Don't follow so it me. Was it was vain. This is why you had to create no, Pinterest. Okay. Vanity. Well, so like Pinterest. I mean, that's why that everybody else has a Pinterest, isn't it? Vanity. It should be the tagline for Pinterest: vain intentions. 
Yeah, you're gonna. This is a. Uh, this episode is gonna make us super popular with a lot of people. Um, <laughs> so, then, then there was a great Gatsby T-shirt that uh, that that uh, I found, and it uh, it says, "Ain't no party like a Gatsby party." Because the Gatsby party don't stop until at least two people are dead and everyone is disillusioned with the Jazz Age as a whole. I feel like that's accurate. Yeah, it's a good shirt. <laughs> so does that mean like all the all the Gatsby parties on Pinterest aren't actual Gatsby parties because nobody dies and nobody becomes disillusioned with yeah, the Jazz they're not Age? Doing a... if they weren't disillusioned with the Jazz yeah. Age, they would stop having Gatsby parties. Yeah, those aren't legit Gatsby parties. Yeah, those are wannabe Gatsby parties. Oh, yeah. Um. So, second, I wanted to follow up with the phrase, opening the kimono. Because um, hey, I have I'm, a tweet. I'm on right now. Um, very cool. <laughs> hey. My dad's just showing me stuff. I wish the sack of Rome. Besides the end, it's kind of the Roman Empire. Very cool. <laughs> Sorry. We had it rough. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> hey, in the future, Andrew. Mhm. Mm I think you can press mute, and it won't show oh. you in the, in the video. Like. Like ever. What the heck is he doing? Oh, our zero viewers are gonna get a real kick out of this. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Anyhow, the tweet was, so Larry Ellison, uh, he stepped down from HP. He was the CEO of HP. And this is only funny for people who follow technology. But um, the tweet was that he he's forced to resign for violating HR guidelines about kimonos in the office. So I just wanted to share that because it validated my use of that phrase. Well, I mean, okay. you're assuming that rich and famous people aren't racist. No, I'm not. I'm just well. I'm just. Um, <laughs> or that they don't say racist things. <laughs> so, Adam, why don't you tell us about the university Spotify thing that you got sent? Oh yeah. So my friend Lincoln sent me this. So shout out to Lincoln. But it's basically just some cool data from Spotify about what people listen to. Um, he sent me specifically the one for BYU where I go, and it was it was really interesting because. We see that almost nobody at BYU listens to Iggy Azalea. <laughs> almost everyone at BYU listens to Vocal Point, which makes me sad. It's all acapella all the time. <laughs> There's oh, very, very little R&B, hip-hop, Led Zeppelin, or dance music being listened to. And <laughs> this is something that makes me really, really happy. Nobody listens to ICP. <laughs> well, okay. So I was going to accuse your university of being racist, but <laughs> they don't listen to ICP either, so they can't really <laughs> be racist. But they do what listen do they to listen lots to? of folk music and boy band music. So that's in case you were wondering if all of the white girls at BYU were stereotypical and loved One Direction, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I'm fun. I'm surprised One Direction. Yeah, I don't, they're okay. still around. I'm surprised most things are things. Mm, that's a deep thought. Like um, every, morning, every morning I wake up and I look at the state of the world and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> that's your, your, your default, your starting <laughs> position is, okay. All right. I'm just like, okay, this is happening. My default when I wake up in the morning is just anger. Yeah. Like I'm always angry in the morning that I that I have to be awake right now. That's kind of sad. It is a really sad way to start my day. That's that's much worse than mine. Yeah. Anyhow, I, mean, I wake up disillusioned with the jazz age as a whole, and you just hate up hating the world. Like. Huh. <laughs> Last piece of follow up. Um, I talked about I mentioned in passing I think on our first episode of this season about my horse electrolytes. Experiment. And oh, I, yes. said, I said one reason that we used horse electrolytes was because Gatorade doesn't have a green apple flavor. Well, yesterday I was at the 7 Eleven and I saw something that validates the power oh. of uh, our podcast. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> we changed the world. Fierce green apple. I feel, I don't know. I've never, I've never asked for Gatorade by flavor. I've always asked for it by color. It's like I want the red Gatorade. But nowadays you don't know favorite. what you're getting because, like, you could say blue or white, and it's cherry. <laughs> well, I guess this just kind of reaffirms my position on always drinking soda all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, who needs sports drinks when you have root beer? Oh, that's a good point. Did someone just knock on my door? <laughs> yes. Making a podcast super important. It went away. Okay. There, there's our cold open right there. Making a podcast super <laughs> important. <laughs> this is an interesting week. Okay. <laughs> we can talk about everything has just been like super downhill this week. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> And I know I've said that. I think I said that on another one, and it, and it and it got better. So that's what I'm hoping happens now. But okay, okay. <laughs> See, like no one, like no one's even talking. It's just like a <laughs> someone says something, and then it's just a bunch of like. <laughs> and so we've we've, we've, it's like we've all gotten so good at making jokes that like we can't top each other anymore. So it's just. We say a joke that, that can't be topped, so like nobody is has. Is that to what we were doing that. before? We were competing. I didn't even know. Maybe always a competition, Aaron. Always. <laughs> no. <laughs> then how conversations work. <laughs> so my brain, my brain is fried. The school started this last week, and oh. my life has just been working. I've been working, coming home, doing homework. All night till I go to sleep, and then waking up and doing that again. Hey, remember me last year when everyone was like, "Yeah, yeah." Where are you? What's wrong with you? That was it. <laughs> I know how you feel, dude. Yeah, so like... my brain is just like in a state of decay right now. Sweet, that should be interesting. All right, let's let's do our questions. Yeah. Question. <laughs> All right, three questions. Uh, Adam, get us started. Question one. Question one. What songs would be on the playlist at your funeral? Andrew, take it away. Um, well, it'd be like the classic ones. It'd be like Dust in the Wind, Long and Winding Road. But I would randomly put in the Benny Hill theme. <laughs> like, like more than once. Like it would happen the first time. Like, oh, that's really, why, why did they do that? And then like, two times later it happened again. It's like, oh, no, who's doing this? <laughs> Make it seem like it's a correction, like you're, uh, like it doesn't play the whole theme. It like it goes, it does the the record scratch, yeah, and then goes back to a song that fits. I think it's just very Adam, just very like this is reminiscent of my life. Oh goodness! <laughs> like, there, like there's, there's no God joke. Be there's with like, you until we meet again, and then there's a record scratch, and the Benny Hill theme starts. <laughs> <laughs> I just, no joke. I just there was imagine like, people getting up and running around trying to fix it before it goes too long. Yeah. <laughs> um, last week like it was real. it was um Sunday evening at like eleven p.m. and I had just finished the edits for the show, and I uh, I, I wanted to put Benny Hill in like three different places, and I was like. <laughs> Nah, I'm tired. <laughs> That's funny that, it's funny that it comes that it comes up. <laughs> um, is this, so that's a good answer. <laughs> all right, my answer is um okay. So first of all, playing like regular like secular music at funerals is weird. Um, I've been to a lot of funerals, so I I'm a funeral connoisseur. Um, the and thing ever. <laughs> I'm trying to spin it, spin it, make it positive. Um, but like but you, I, so so like I went to a funeral one. Yes, huh? This funeral's okay. This is not the best one I've been. 
<laughs> I've, got, I've got like a, a yellow <laughs> legal pad from the wine taking country. notes on. <laughs> <laughs> you better hope he believes in reincarnation so he can try this one again. <laughs> 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 um, I'm getting. I'm getting. I, so I went to a funeral. Floral notes at this funeral. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> why are you like okay. reviewing it in my mind too? Like for the newspaper. Like it was okay. <laughs> it was only a little crying. What if I've got? What if I've got the fedora with the newspaper guys? Like you know, the little. It just says press. Press. <laughs> press card. <laughs> oh, that would be good. Um, no, so okay, but I've been to a lot, and I went to one. It was this guy who was like a recovering alcoholic who I just met, and his mom wanted me to be like be a good influence on him. Is basically the setup to this. And I was. Good and he job. Was doing, apparently, he, he, was, <laughs> he was doing really well until the night he got hammered and drove home drunk and ran into a tree. Anyhow, I got invited to his funeral. I'm at his funeral, and it's like a normal funeral, you know, normal things are going on, and then his friend's like, um, we, we promised that we'd play his favorite song, and I'm just, I just, this song was really, really affected him, so, so. I really hope it's all, ICP. Let's all just listen. <laughs> no. It was um, Zephyr Song by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> which, which there is, you go. which is ostensibly, I'm pretty sure, like a drug-related song about substance abuse. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's a it's a Red Hot Chili Pepper song, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. If it's not about so California, I had a, I had a it's about drugs. Or both. Oh, I had a similar experience. I had a friend in high school who passed away, and they played his favorite song, and it was a Pennywise song, which was <laughs> not appropriate for the situation. <laughs> was it Bro Him? It might have been. I don't remember. It was it's probably bro him. a while ago. Um. <laughs> anyhow, that's not even my answer. So my answer is... <laughs> um, I just wanted to share that because I know how awkward it can be and I want my funeral to be happy. So, so first of all, this is like not, I would not do this, but I have to answer this question. So in the alternate universe where I have to make a funeral playlist, <laughs> my funeral playlist is just going to be a song that always brought me joy. This song used to play on the radio every day when I would get out of class and, and, and get onto the bus to go home from my freshman and sophomore year. Every day they played the same song. And it is by Cool in the Gang, and his little song <laughs> celebration. <laughs> it is the happiest, best song ever, because I want people <laughs> at my funeral to feel happy and to celebrate. I want them Just to on a loop over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> no, it would only play once, and then the whole rest of the funeral. Is gonna is gonna be music by uh, um, uh, hold on, so Booker T and the MCs. <laughs> so it's all it's all like Motown instrumental. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have to say. About that. <laughs> it, it reminds me of my idea for like a wedding soundtrack where it's We Are Family for like thirty minutes. <laughs> 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 For my wedding, but just so that just it never wedding. happens again. Yeah, just a wedding. Well, I want someone to like mistakenly ask me to help them do their music for them for their wedding, which has happened. But I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna do it. But and just like the song over and over and over again. I I would pick horrible songs if I was It's a like the DJ. most. Like I would play Joy Division. Love will tear us apart. Like, I would not make. Good <laughs> <laughs> the soundtrack, the Novoscotchi or whatever. <laughs> the sad things. Oh, oh man. Adam, what's your what's your answer to your own question? I want to hear this. Did we lose him? So I have a thought of for this playlist. Whoa. Is Let's Dance to Joy Division by the Wombats. 
the happiest song. Oh, in the hey, world. I like that song. The actual happiest song in the world, Aaron. And then I also want uh, Shut Up and Let Me Go by the Ting Tings. <laughs> um, and then No Signs of Life by OK Go would be a good one. Uh, and then there's a song by Band of Horses called Is There a Ghost? <laughs> there's a okay. I Want Nice to Know You by Incubus to play. Like uh, a terrible really freshman college student's <laughs> playlist that he gets to the girl he likes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's my funeral. And only only after a while does she realize that this is about him dying. <laughs> <laughs> like she first, this guy really likes me. He's kind of creepy, but this is kind of cool. And then she keeps listening and she looks at the tracks. She's like, there's a theme here. It's death. <laughs> Uh, but I'm not done. There's there's two songs that I want to play at specific points. Uh, when they're lowering <laughs> me into the earth, I to continue my love affair with this song, I want them to play Tub Thumping. <laughs> <laughs> I That's get so down, scary. But I get up again as like I'm my casket is being lowered into my hole. And then when they're covering me with dirt, I want I Like Dirt by the Red Hot Chili Peppers to play. <laughs> uh, I hate to break it to you, Adam, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it to your funeral. <laughs> this will be the best funeral. That's a ever. lie. I will be there, and I will be recording it, <laughs> and I'll just be like, I'll just be consoling your mother. Like he wasn't really this crazy. He was actually a good guy. On the final <laughs> episode of Three Guys Three Questions, Adam's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's. I, what's sad, though, is that I didn't make this playlist just because I made this question. I already, I might have already had this playlist. <laughs> it's on, <laughs> I have made it's this on Spotify list. right now. <laughs> Wait, is it on Spotify? Did we lose them again? No, I'm I don't know, but I heard myself echoing a lot. Oh, yeah, that was weird. No, it's it's not. I'll, I'll make a Spotify playlist, and then I'll put it. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Make sure you put Benny Hill like every three times. <laughs> <laughs> we should each make our funeral our, our actual playlists because we all have we want like more work to do. I think that's just flirting with the idea that we're going to die soon. And <laughs> I don't, it's like no, taunting death. We need to get our estates in order, and since I don't have anything to like bequeath to anyone... The only thing I can do is make a playlist for my funeral. <laughs> this is getting weird. Let's go to the next question. <laughs> Andrew, it's your turn. Yeah, okay. So, how would I phrase it? Um, if you had to define your life story as a movie title, what movie would it be, you pick and why? Does that make sense? I My question is, 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 is this an pre-existing movie title, or am I making a movie title? No, it has to be a pre-existing movie title. Okay. If it's a pre-existing movie title, um, I'm going to have to pick Almost Famous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you want me to tell you what it would be if I was making up the movie title? Yes, I do, now that I think about it. Narrowly Skirting Success. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we call a that's that's what we call a win win because I either way. Um, so the reason it would be the reason it would be almost famous is because like a lot of times people people always remark in my stories like uh, they'll mention something like oh I know that guy or I know that person you know, like a, a a famous person or like a internet famous person or something. Um, like I seem to have throughout my life met and been acquainted with and known people who became much more successful than me in every endeavor and field of life that I could have theoretically followed the same path, but I for whatever reason didn't. I just decided I was just like lazy, or I just decided, meh. So it happens a lot of times. Like someone someone was mentioning the other day, they were like talking about the Power Rangers. I was like, oh, I knew the 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 stunt double for the for the pink Power Ranger. 
And they're like, whatever, you don't, you did not. And I'm like, I did. <laughs> and that happens like all the time where people will mention something like, oh, I knew that person or I did this thing with that person or I met that person. So I don't know. And it's not like I'm not like a fame junkie. I'm not like someone who watches like like E! Network or like Entertainment Tonight. Or like I don't really care about celebrity or any of that kind of crap. But that's it. That's all I have. Good job. That's that's a good amount to have. I like I like that. <laughs> it wasn't that funny, but it's true. <laughs> I was I was expecting you to say like Pretty in Pink or something. Oh man, I love that movie, man. <laughs> and I do look good in pink. There is, there is a lost episode of this show from the first season where I wore a lavender shirt. <laughs> oh, I remember that, yeah. I got mocked the whole time, and I never wore that shirt again. Yep. <laughs> to continue the, the theme of mocking you, your hat's crooked. Oh, crap. <laughs> there we go. It's so crooked. It wasn't crooked. In, no, it's not crooked. It's the line isn't center. That's just worse. Because it's bespoke. That's I don't know what that means. <laughs> I've never heard that in this context. I don't think that means anything. It's a anything. handmade hat. Did you get it from a haberdashery? That's my new favorite word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adam, what's your answer? I've been trying to avoid it. Um, <laughs> Is that's a really? I've never heard of that movie. I'm trying to avoid <laughs> it. <laughs> it sounds like an '80s movie. That would probably be mine if I was making up a movie title. Actually, it's I've been thing Larry to avoid David this. wrote. I've been trying to avoid it. <laughs> I've been trying to think of like the movies I've lost recently, but like they don't have titles that sum up my life. Like there's Robot and Frank, which is a great movie, but I'm not a robot, nor am I named Frank. Um, <laughs> so that wouldn't really work. So I think I'm just gonna have to go with the old classic Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> stupid. I guess I'd <laughs> so stupid. Is it, be is it because um, you uh, terminate laughing because your answer is so bad? I remember you laughing at it. <laughs> I, remember that. I recall that happening. <laughs> Terminator. you got to come up with a why. That's the best part of the answer though, right? I mean I don't have a good why. I just want to be called the Terminator. <laughs> Adam Anderson was like the Terminator. I keep thinking I keep thinking of like answers if I was like in a separate situation. Like if I was a nurse and like in a nursing home, it would be Jurassic Park, no question. <laughs> but I'm not <laughs> I'm just an English major. Like, I'm a student. There's plenty of English major titled related movies. Name one other than the Dead Poets Society. Crap. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Good Will Hunting? <laughs> Pretty sure that was math. <laughs> that's not that's math. Hey. hey, you need a more exciting major. <laughs> As an English major, I can verify this. I guess, I guess, um, since I am an English major, a beautiful mind that would work. Oh. Even though that movie was about math and insanity, I feel like that describes the title describes me quite well because because only I your mind is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautiful in your mind. You're beautiful. <laughs> If you sing another verse, you have to pay for it. You know you can just buy the whole... I just need a taste. Just need a taste. <laughs> oh, gosh. Can we just do a podcast where we just talk about The Office the whole time? No. No. Be my favorite. Maybe. If that would, I do like, like, you can. Like, you can, <laughs> but if we were here, it would still just be you talking. <laughs> That's so good. Um, 
Um, Andrew, I want to hear your answer. Okay, well, I have I have a real mo- couple movie titles, and then I have a fake one that I thought of just now. Um, <laughs> obviously, my first one would be Better Off Dead, the John Cusack <laughs> movie, just because it's a good title. <laughs> or if Wait, I wanted is this to get made the- before you die or after you die. Doesn't matter. Because <laughs> if it's made. <laughs> Either way, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if I want to get depressing and hysterical, you just do Lone Survivor or Never Been Kissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my my fake title would be <laughs> Girls Like Confidence, I Like Spider-Man. The Andrew Stepp. <laughs> 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 that just sounds like like uh, perfectly made for for Comedy Central, made for TV, about yep. some stand-up comedian or something. That was Starring Howie Mandel. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you ever heard? This is a bit of a tangent. Have you ever heard of Mike Birbiglia? Yeah. Yeah. He has a stand-up special called My Girlfriend's Boyfriend. I haven't watched it yet. Is it good? <laughs> It's so good. Spoiler alert, his boyfriend, his girlfriend's boyfriend is not him. Oh, okay. So, all right. Have you seen Sleepwalk with me? <laughs> I love that movie so much. That was one of, that was one of my good potential man. titles, but I couldn't... It was it was worse than Terminator, so... <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't go that far. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie, so Sleepwalk with me. It's, uh, it you have to be movie. in the right mood to watch it, because it's... Don't watch it when you're super happy. Yeah. Or super depressed. Or super depressed. <laughs> Just kind of like watch it like in the middle, and also you should probably not watch it with like a girlfriend or something. <laughs> yeah. Don't be in a relationship when you watch it. Because <laughs> you'll be out of a relationship afterwards. <laughs> it's bad news. Um. All right. Well, those are some good answers. Uh. I guess it's my turn. Mm-hmm. Well, we're blasting through these. Hopefully, um. These would be a little bit longer. Hint, hint. Uh, oh, sorry. Do you want us? Do you want us to riff a little bit more? Because I have nothing else to say. Riff, riff a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> we went fast. We we were we were all worried that we were, this was going to be too long of a show, and now it's like, oh, we still have a lot to do. <laughs> um. So my question is, um, if you could create a documentary, what would you make? Adam. I have a documentary about Juggalos, no question. That would be a good one. I'd watch it. No, like, it sounds it sounds like a really facetious answer, but I actually really want to know about, like, what's going on in their brains. <laughs> My first exposure to Juggalos was some Nightline special or, like, 2020 special on Juggalos, like, in the 90s. So look on the internet, maybe this already... <laughs> No, but part of it has to be why it's still a thing. Yeah, like why why is it a thing? Like I've heard I've heard that it's like like they're kind of like the, the society's rejects of people, you know, and so like they just kind of found solidarity in being not wanted anywhere else. But then there's all there's like I can see that, but then there's all sorts of other questions. Like the other day, I ran into pictures of juggalos on the internet who had like clown makeup. Not just clown makeup, but clown makeup tattooed on their faces. What? Like you can't really do that. And so, like, I just want to, I just want to interview those people and be like, "What did you hope to get out of this? Like, what is your <laughs> end game here?" I just can't picture you and a couple of juggalos in a room <laughs> having a serious <laughs> conversation that doesn't end in them beating you up <laughs> or or just leaving. I'll I'll have jugs of Fago to placate them. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a little <laughs> little magnet set that. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? How do I make work? The title. <laughs> what? You know, I, I, I know the song goes right. And then like, like, I just I just want to understand them. Like I want to understand like their odd like anti intellectual pride. Like why are you so happy about this? I don't understand. I don't get it. Cause like I okay. I thought I hadn't met a juggalo since high school. 
And then it turns out a guy I have worked with for years is a, like, juggalo. Like, he has it, a job? Yeah! <laughs> he has a doctorate! <laughs> this, is, this is even it, more, what? like, perplexing. He has, I wanna, he has a PhD. In juggalism? <laughs> He's Dr. Juggalo, man. <laughs> I don't... I'm so... That's so curious. <laughs> and I don't want to. I don't want to ask him about it because I don't want to talk about it. Like, because like, anything I say, if we get in a conversation, I'm going to somehow offend him because I'm gonna imply that he's stupid or it's a bad choice or you know what I mean. Like, so I just don't bring it up. Have I really asked him. Can we have guests on this show? Can we actually make this documentary? <laughs> because I want to know. Like real music before, you know, like hey, here's a lot of other music that's not terrible. That's not the base your life around. I but we get along now, and <laughs> we won't after we have that conversation. <laughs> <sighs> It's just, it's so amazing, because he probably knows how magnets work. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Hopefully, that was one of the questions on his doctorate. <laughs> <laughs> his thesis is, how do magnets work? <laughs> oh, is... I remember a couple years ago, didn't the, the insane clown posse come out as being, like, super Christian or something like that? And everyone flipped out? I don't know. I don't know. I... I don't, I don't remember I don't track 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 of what they do. They scare me. To me, they're they're like to me, juggalos are like a mythical creature, like a unicorn. Like I don't know how they work. I don't know even like enough about them other than that they, that's what they look like, that's what they are. Freaking juggalos, how do they work? <laughs> that's the title of my documentary. <laughs> <laughs> the title of your documentary is Juggalos, How Do They Work? <laughs> Spoiler alert. They don't, except for this guy I know who's a good, up, upstanding guy who has a doctor. He has a doctor. Like, I wonder if there's like a, a belt family? Like... He has a family. He's like, I don't know, man. Does he have baby Juggalos? He's Canadian. Oh, that's why. Oh, that's... oh we have three that's listeners from Canada. Everything out the window. <laughs> I wonder if uh, we have who do you think our listeners from Canada are? Do you think we have any Juggalo listeners? Do you think they could email us? You really want? If you this. are a Juggalo listener, email us if you know how to use email <laughs> at three guys three questions at gmail dot com. It is the number three guys the number three questions at gmail dot com. If you are a Juggalo who can use a keyboard, yeah, and and the number three. And the word questions. The three is the one that's shaped like a mustache <laughs> sideways. <laughs> We're going to get so many emails, man. I'm tagging this on YouTube as just the only tag for this episode. And, and, and on iTunes is Juggalos. <laughs> I don't okay. get it. I don't understand. Let's move on because... Uh, you should probably stop saying mean things about Juggalos. <laughs> Oh. Okay, Andrew. Remember, okay. the question is: If you could make a create a documentary, what would you make? I'd be making a documentary about documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll just follow Ken Ken Burns around and watch him make a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> and you got like voiceover letters of him like sending you a cease and desist. <laughs> like a like a like a like a court order to stay away, and you have like Morgan Freeman reading it. <laughs> yeah, Tom Wells, a man can make a documentary. <laughs> Could just be voiceovers of the voiceovers in his documentary. <laughs> <laughs> you have like I don't really. Know. Like you should, you should interview all of like the specialists and people that he interviews right after, and just be like, "Oh, what was it like being in an in an interview for a documentary?" Yeah, exactly the, fi what I'll do. the fiddle player from the Ken Burns documentary. <laughs> <laughs> interview him. How would you describe your experience playing the fiddle for Ken Burns documentary? <laughs> no, my honest answer 
if I could, I thought it'd be really interesting to do a documentary on the Daily Show and Stephen in the Colbert Report. I feel like I really want to know how that type of process works, where they can do a live show, well, not a live show, but a show every day that's still so good after all these years. I feel like there's a lot of moving parts that I think would be really interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm, I think they have this like a robot crew in the back. Yeah, just constantly working. Turning out material. <laughs> just, but I think yeah. that'd be interesting. Just a team of juggalos on the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we have to bring him back to the juggalos? <laughs> I feel like they would be really skilled cameramen. <laughs> I don't think they would be. I don't think. I'm trying to say nice things about juggalos to make up for what we said earlier, but you won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Daily Show Colbert Report. I know they have like racks and racks of DVRs recording news channels and then like scanning for. I think they have like a company they outsource to that just like, like scans for things. Yeah, I can't imagine whoever's job it is to sit there and watch 24 hour news 24 hours with you blowing oh, their brains out. There's actually a company that. So you give them basically like an assignment and it's like some guy sitting in a cubicle watching like MSNBC all day. And scanning for, you know, so you can pay them to be like, find this politician being a hypocrite. And they just watch all day and they're like, found it, tag it, found it, tag it. It's like, and then and then you have it on your end, you receive all these timestamps and videos and you can use it. It's crazy. It's like, it's a whole industry, man. Man, maybe we should outsource that for like... For our show I, notes? Do you, th- you know, do you think I could get some good answers from them? About Juggalos? <laughs> No, about oh. movie titles and things. <laughs> <laughs> just answer. Just do this whole show for us. <laughs> Less juggalos for sure. Uh, I don't know. Maybe more juggalos. It's all juggalos all the time. <laughs> hey, three guys, episode, three questions, we, bunch we of juggalos. juggalo makeup next episode. <laughs> <laughs> one of us, one of us does it wrong, and it actually is is kiss. <laughs> <laughs> The line between Juggalo and Kiss. <laughs> and that's what we call a callback. <laughs> callback. <laughs> okay, um <laughs> my answer my answer to this question is is uh I would like to make a, a documentary where um I find Taylor Swift fascinating. Yeah, you do. Because because she is so like successful and everywhere and she seems to not make a single error in public just like she's she's never like you know you know there's no TMZ reporting on Taylor Swift like Right. Like there was there wasn't a feud after Kanye interrupted her. But Beyonce's video. She, yeah, she was like everyone was just like boo Kanye, like like everyone just. And she was just, just she was just side. standing up on stage like, oh, this is awkward. Yeah, and she does <laughs> weird things like dances at every award show, publicly in the front row, standing in someone's way. I mean, she, <laughs> like she's either like the most sincere and just nice individual, or she's like. A sociopath that is <laughs> ca- like a like. She's not a real what? person. She's like a robot. Yeah, is, they put is that what your documentary is about? And then they open the closet and she comes out. <laughs> My documentary isn't about just Taylor Swift. I want so she's like super famous, but I want to test the the like who Taylor Swift is by taking her, so this is a documentary, Taylor Swift goes to a foreign land where nobody knows her, where she's just like, you know, like Papua New Guinea or something. Does, does she receive any explanation about why she's in Papua New Guinea? Or she knows. She just like she wakes up one day and she's to, there. We're going to film you living in Papua New Guinea for six months, and you're going to live with the natives and you're just gonna live life there. You can't hide. You have to like live your life here. And and, and like w- we're gonna watch what happens. And we're so it would help to discern like 
Like, what, can she like remake herself in Papua New Guinea? Like, <laughs> will she get along with people? Will she not? Like, what? I, I feel like, like there might be a language barrier. Well, uh, maybe. cultural barrier. barrier. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. I mean, it could be anywhere, right? But just like somewhere where she's not known. She's not like super famous or popular. It could I'd, be, like, I'd like to see her like plop down in like Sri she's Lanka just, like, or something. She's just air dropped in. The, like. Well, like she just like wakes up and she's like, "What am I doing?" And then like she, like the only thing that we've given her, like as a resource, is a guitar or something. And by the end of the six months, she's like the supreme dictator of the country. <laughs> exactly. Like, I want to see what she does. Like what happens? I want to see she, Taylor Swift with in this out of out of her fish out of water situation. She'd be like the nicest dictator ever, though. <laughs> like her political rallies would just be like concerts. She's just like, "All right, let's all sing along now." <laughs> Yeah. She's crazy. Like, she has the same band that she had when she was 14. That's pretty cool. She hasn't fired anybody or, like, that's crazy. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. So it's going to be called States of Swift. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a good title? We can workshop I, it. I, I would have called it, like, Taylor Swift, person or sociopath, because you brought up that question earlier. <laughs> I mean, sociopaths are technically people. Well, I guess. <laughs> that sounds like something a sociopath would say. Long pause, long pause, long pause. Okay, um... Yeah, like... I feel like there's so much potential for this documentary. Like, <laughs> like this well, is something you really want. I feel, I really, I really feel like she would, she would make like large, like big strides in this country by the end of six months. Like she, she'd probably, like we should drop her off in like a third world country. Like by the end of six months, like she'd be, she'd use the power of music and love to get them all like clean water and vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> Malaria just disappears in Africa because <laughs> we dropped her off somewhere in the Congo. <laughs> Let's be honest, like, the first, like, week, she'll be almost dead. <laughs> <laughs> the camera guy who's like, we can't do anything, we promised, and then just watch this guy. <laughs> and the director is just like, this is great footage. <laughs> <laughs> the footage is mostly of a medevac. <laughs> Airlifted after the first week. <laughs> I don't know. I have faith. I have faith that she could make it work. I don't know. I feel like if she was on Survivors, like she'd win, and like everybody would be okay with it. There'd be no fighting. You know what I mean? Like even yeah. the girl who was like, "I didn't come here to make friends," would be like, "Taylor Swift is my best friend." Who would vote and against? Really, her? Like who everybody would, would say, you know, Taylor Swift could really could use this victory. <laughs> I think we need to give this to her. <laughs> Andrew, what were you saying? I was just gonna say, who would vote for? Her? Like, vote her off. Survivor. She wouldn't have to be have like an allegiance or an alliance or anything. Only She's person like, you can hang out with is Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see her, Kanye, and like ten other random people just like on Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I changed my documentary. I just want to follow Kanye West around. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West is is crazy because he's like a genius, but he's nuts. Yeah, well, like most geniuses, but I would just like to follow him around and see the things he does, because I think that would be hilarious. Uh, like, you know that cowbell sketch where Christopher Walken comes in and he's like, I'm just like you. I put my pants on one leg at a time in the morning, but when my pants are on, I make gold records. <laughs> that was a joke, but I'm pretty sure that's something Kanye has seriously said. <laughs> like, without a hint of irony. It sounds exactly like something he's he, he would say. <laughs> oh, funny. Um. All right. Well, that's it, right? I mean, that's that's the show. That's the questions. Right. Those are our documentaries. Um, we should probably start a Kickstarter for one of these. <laughs> let's uh, let's get a Kickstarter. We need to buy a domain, like a like um. <sighs> There's so many new TLDs, like like uh. Kanye dot sexy, <laughs> <laughs> Swift Taylor Swift dot shopping or something. Is there a dot documentary? No, no. I, let's not go through that. Jugga dot Lowe's. Documentaries. 
Andrew, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Wasn't funny enough to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like Jugga.Lows could be one. Oh, crap. That's how we know we've freaking ruined everything. That We're just talking about domains. Yeah, yeah. anyway, so you can reach That's... me at, at A underscore Sav. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can be reached at, at that Adam kid, and I especially talk to you if you're a Juggalo, because I might actually make this documentary. You <laughs> start following Juggalos. Like... Like I kind of said it as a joke, but I actually really want to. I really want to know. I do want to know, but I wouldn't want to spend the I wanna, time. I want to pick their brains apart. Like I just, like, what's going on in there? <laughs> what if you come out the other side a juggalo? What? I feel like that would either that, that would, if if I made a documentary and then I turned into a juggalo, I feel like that would probably be. Either some form of Stockholm syndrome, or like it would be a very informed decision. It's the well, dark, I, the dark side of empathy, man. I feel like you have to become a juggalo so that you can infiltrate their ways and know them, and they'll trust you. <laughs> You're like a, a juggalo anthropologist. Yeah. Exactly. Should we set up a stick Kickstarter so I can go to the gathering? <laughs> what is their gathering called? What is it? Uh... I'm pretty sure it's just the gathering. The gathering. Oh man. All right. Well, I'm gonna look for domains. I'm at um at Aaron L M Goodwin on the Twitter. Um, and I think that is about it. Yeah. And if you have, if you want to send us questions that we're gonna use in the show, we have one question in the queue that is gonna come in next week. Um, from 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 someone, one of our our listeners slash watchers viewers whatever. So look forward to that, and it's going to be used in the show. So if you have a good question, send it, and it could be used in the show. Um, and if it's not used in the show, we're just going to answer them on the website. So you'll you'll get answers. Um, and that is at 3G.3Q. No, I did that wrong. It is at it is um, 3G3Q.co is our website. And you can ask the question at 3G3Q.co slash ask. You can ask us questions. That's good. I think that's good. Yeah.